We are doing 1.1, which is linear functions and the tangent problem. So basically, just to simplify this a little bit, there's two different things that we could look at when we're talking about this. We have the tangent problem when we're looking at calculus or being introduced to calculus, and then we have the area problem. So the tangent problem here, so this one right here, is basically looking at how to determine the slope of a graph. Whereas the area problem right here is how to find the area under a graph. So this is the stuff that I was saying like later in the course. If we get to it, that's great. Um, but we will at least see an introduction to this or see how it ties in. But we'll be focusing on the tangent problem for today. Okay, so you're going to hear me saying this over and over again, probably every class, but I really mean it every time I say it. I feel like a lot of today is not even anything new. It's based on review, but I do think that it's helpful to go through that review. So let's start first by looking at this graph of a linear function. So if we have a graph that looks like this, we all know this, right? We talked briefly about it yesterday. We know that the equation would be y or f of x equals mx plus b. Um, I've written this out that m is the rate of change of y with respect to x because you very briefly touch upon that in other courses, but we usually just talked about how this is slope, right? And we looked at some different ways of writing or referring to slope. What are some of those ways? Like, what do you think of when I mention slope? Yeah, Abtin? Yeah, so we could say delta y over, and I'm going to do the different colors just so I can clearly show you. Delta x, so on here, do you guys see that if I were to take this, like, I labeled this one as point 0.1, so I've called it x1, y1, and I've labeled this one point 0.2, so I've called it x2, y2, and although you wouldn't actually physically need to do this, we've sort of looked at it as if we're drawing a right angle triangle under it, or it might be above it, depending on if the slope is positive or negative, right? So going through this, our delta x, or our change in x, would be referring to this portion here. We all know that, right? So we would do um, x2 minus x1, or the other way around, it doesn't actually matter. And then this here would be our change in or y or delta y. Good? There's other ways that we've also referred to slope. Something over something, using words. What are the somethings? Yeah, rise. This is the hardest part of my teaching, keeping the colors coordinated. But rise over run, and I'm doing that, I'll explain it to you in the first lesson, but I'm doing that for a purpose, not just to make it bright and colorful, but so that you can make it super clear and easy to see like what is linked together and where these values are coming from. So if it helps you, go ahead and use the colors in your notes as well. Um, it's your choice. But I, as I said, you could also print the notes off if you want to bring them in so you don't have to write them. Okay, so then slope describes the steepness or the angle of a line. Am I right that this is just review and you know this? So we won't spend too much time on that. And then again, this is simply review. Here's the first example. A line passes through the point 1, 2, and 7, 11. Determine the slope and the equation of the line. Okay, so do you see that this is basically, like, what is this? Math 10, I'm going to say, is the first time we learn this. But if we want to find the slope, first of all, just by looking at this, um, we're looking for slope. Well, slope would be what? By looking at this. Yeah. Uh, maybe the equation first. Yeah, okay. So using the numbers here? 
11 minus 2, so everybody good with that from here, and then over 7 minus 1, everybody good with that? This is all review and we know this, right? So after going through this, what's our actual slope or what's the best way for us to say it? Anybody? Yeah. It's just going to be 3 over 2, right? And then if we're looking for the equation of the line, do you see that if we just, like when we reduce this and simplify it, we find the slope is 3 over 2. So it would be y equals 3 over 2x plus b. What's a smart, easy way for me to quickly figure out what our b value is? Yeah. We plug in the values. It doesn't matter which one. By looking at it, like that's probably going to make our life a little bit easier, right? So always go for the easy route whenever possible. And so we're going to have 2 for our y value equals 3 over 2 times we're going to plug in the 1 from there for our x value plus that. So after all this, what do we end up getting for our b value? Well, we're going to have 2 equals 3 over 2 plus b, right? So we're going to subtract that out. So what do we end up getting for our b value? Anybody? One half. Everybody good with that? So I'm just going to write it up here. Our equation, after working our way through that, would be y equals 3 over 2x plus 1 half. So there's just a quick review because what we're going to be doing with this stuff basically operates under the assumption that you just know this stuff, um, which I'm, I'm guessing that you're probably pretty comfortable with it, but it's always good to review and have a quick refresher. Are we good with that? Are there questions before we move on? Okay, next thing is let's take a look at these graphs. Determining tangents. So taking a look at our first graph here, if I have what looks like it was going to form a parabola, a tangent is basically just a straight line that touches at one point. So this thing here is our point of tangency. So it's only, if we were to zoom in, because it's hard to tell with my writing, it would only touch at one particular point. That's, by definition, that's what a tangent is. So determining the slope of a curve requires that we construct a tangent line. So that's what it is in the first graph there. Old news? Nothing new so far? Okay, so it probably depends. Some of you have seen this, some have not. The other one, so down here to compare and contrast this a little bit, is called a secant line. Have you heard of that before? Some have, some haven't. So... Well, I wanted to show them together so we could compare them because there's so much similarity there. So again, if we have that parabola like the one above that I just didn't quite finish, I could, I could just go like that. Um, and then if we have a line that's here, see this line, I'll redraw it. It actually goes through and would touch at two different points. So two points of contact. So right there, it would be touching the parabola, and right there. So a tangent touches just on the outside of the curve that we're looking at. It could be a parabola, it could be a circle, it could be anything. It could be a polynomial. Um, but with the secant, it actually goes through the curve or the graph, and it touches at two different points. Good? So this is really just laying down the groundwork so that you have the vocabulary and you know what it is we're working with. So far, so good? Okay, so then for this next one, for the function f of x equals x squared plus 1, it says estimate the slope at x equals 3. I mean... Based on all the, I'm going to refer to pre-calc 11 is where you did so much parabola stuff. Remember that? Basically the whole course is parabolas. Um, do you have a mental picture of what this parabola looks like? Pretty much? If it's y equals x squared plus 1, do you see that it's just a parabola that's moved up one? 
If we are looking for the slope at x equals 3, what do you think that we would do to figure that out? <laughs> so we are in, we're without graphing it out because we could graph it out, but this is like the stuff that we just finished doing. But if we just have our equation and we know the point of interest, our point of interest is this three. So that's our point of interest. So if we want to figure out what the slope is at that point, we want to, first of all, plug in this value to figure out what our y value is going to be at that point. So number one, let's plug in x equals three. So we're going to have f of 3 equals 3 squared plus 1. So we end up getting that we have 10 when our x value is 3. So we have the point 3, 10. So far so good, and that makes sense. Okay, so then we would want to choose a second point. So... Let me, and I'm going to do this. You wouldn't actually do this, but I want to show you the concept of what we're working with and why we're doing this. So we would want to choose another point because if we're trying to make a tangent, do you see that a tangent would be a straight line like, like what we were showing in the first one here? So we want to, let's say I'm going to, well, no, maybe I'm going to not number it, but I'll call it A. So I'm going to say, estimate a, I'm going to say that I'm looking at another point where maybe my x2 point would be at 4. So again, my first point of interest was at x equals 3. So I'm going to pick one that's like a little ways away from there. So I'm going to go for 4. If we plug in 4, um, so if I plug in f of 4, and we plug it into our equation, what was it again? x squared plus 1. Um, we find that we get 17, right? 4 squared plus 1, so that makes sense. So now we have this point that's 4, 17. So I want to look at what the slope would be between this one that I had here and my new point here, which is at 4, 17. So when I go to plug that in, I would have 17 from here minus the 10 from here divided by the 4 that I had here and the 3 that I have here, right? So when we work our way through that, we find that our slope is equal to 7. Okay, let me try another one. So let me do point B. So estimate B. I started with like uh, the first point of interest was 3, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to try the next whole number, which is 4. But we learned from our activity last day, the closer we get, the more accurate we're going to get. So maybe I'm going to pick 3.5 this time. So instead, let's say I make my x2 3.5. If I plug in f of 3.5, so what I'm doing is 3.5 squared plus 1, because that was our equation. So if we do that, we get that it's 13.25. Okay, so again, remember that was 17. Now I got that it's 13.25. So this would be my new point. So this time when I go to do my slope, I would get 13.25 minus 10. So 13.25 minus 10, so the 10 from my original point, over... 3.5 minus the 3 from my original point. So after working my way through that, I find that my slope is 6.5 this time. So that one was 7, this one was 6.5. And we're going to do one more. I know you're probably tired of this by now, but we're going to do one more. Um, so let's say we have point C. And we're going to make it x2 equals 3.1. So I'm bringing it closer and closer and closer to my original point of interest, which was x equals 3. When I plug this in, f of 3.1, I find that it's equal to 10.61. Again, how am I getting that? 
That's just 3.1 squared plus 1 in order to come up with that. And can we skip the steps? By now you know how to find the slope. I'm just going to tell you that the slope this time ends up being 6.1. So let's take a look at the pattern of behavior here. I had a 7 when I chose 4. When I brought it closer, I got 6.5. And when I brought it even closer, I got 6.1. The actual slope is 6. And maybe part of why I did this for you or with you is to help you to appreciate the things that you're going to learn in this course because could you imagine our old, like our only method that we knew how to do this would be to take points that are closer and closer and plug them in until we find it. Um, and math is actually all about looking for patterns and finding shortcuts. And that's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn a skill to take a shortcut so we don't have to do all these colorful, different testing of points to figure out how to get there. But do we get the concept? It logically makes sense. If we're picking points that are further away, it's going to be a little less accurate the closer we get, the closer we get, the closer we get to the point of interest, we're increasing the level of accuracy, which ties into the concept of what you did um, last class in that activity. Okay, uh, questions before we move on? So far we're good? New or review? A lot of review? kind of building in some new concepts, but I think review is probably a good thing. So this is sort of just um, reiterating and repeating what we just did, but if we have again this graph here, and uh, it's just a visual representation of what we're talking about. If we have our x1 value here and our x2 value here, the change in x is us bringing that value closer together. As we slide x2 towards x1, our estimate of the tangent slope improves. So we improve our accuracy. We talked about that. As x2 approaches x1, so this is right here that I'm referring to, the change in x approaches 0. The mathematical way of writing that, so the change in x with the arrow here approaching 0 as x2 approaches x1. Does that make sense? So there's a slight problem with that because when we do our slope, change in y over change in x, what's the problem with change in x going to zero? Yeah. Yeah, we can't divide by zero, right? So we know that that's not allowed. We know that that usually is a hole or an asymptote when we are working with graphs and looking at functions. So we have a problem. If, change, if x2 reaches x1, then our change of x here is going to be 0, and that's in the denominator when we're talking about slope. Our two points collapse to 1, and we can no longer calculate the slope. So this is how we deal with that. We sidestep this issue with the concept of limits. I am going to go over this in very thick green writing because this is a big deal. This is what we're doing and this is what everything is about for the next little while until we learn something better and quicker and more efficient and then we drop this off as well. So. M we are familiar with. That's our old way of looking at it. We know that that slope, we've dealt with that a lot. We're just adding on to that a new way of doing things or looking at things. M is equal to the limit. So this is our abbreviation for it. The limit as the change of X approaches zero. So that's our change in Y over change in X. So let me try to bring a little more clarity to this. M is basically equal to this whole new concept. The limit 
as the change in x approaches 0 for change in y over change in x. So we are still looking at the same thing. We're still talking slope, but we've brought in a new way of looking at it. And believe it or not, that's actually what you've been doing all of these years in math. You kind of just do the same things over and over again, but you find a better, more efficient way of doing it. And then we drop off the old way. Remember way back when in elementary school, before learning, well, what did you have to do before learning multiplication? You'd have to sit there and add everything, right? Well, kind of like the hand yesterday in the activity, which some of you were doing. You had to sit there and actually count every single little thing, and then you learned multiplication. It's like, wait, I can take a shortcut. I can just count the length and the width, multiply them, and I don't have to sit there and count out a hundred of something, right? Similarly, we're learning new ways of looking at the same old stuff in a more quicker and efficient manner. Good? Okay, so this notation means push the change in x as small as possible, but do not reach change in x equals zero. We know the reason we can't have that happen because it's in the denominator here, and you can't have zero in the denominator. So it limits the approach. Make sense? That's the only new thing or new concept, which is a big deal. So we're going to practice it a lot. Um, there's your work or assignment for today.